all there and welcome to the workshop now today's video was going to be quite special because I was going to originally going to show you how to connect this up wire it up and put it into this CNC router unfortunately I can't because Mark 3 no matter what I do will not recognize this controller and I've searched around on the internet, uh, went to the driver download um, area of this company, downloaded you know the, what was supposed to have been the correct um, DIL file for Mark III to recognize it, nothing. Uh, the computer sees this and, uh, and it says that it's working properly but Mac 3 just will not recognize it and I can hear you say oh try another computer or try another reinstall of Mac 3 four computers later and four reinstalls and nothing so I did some digging around on the internet and I do see that there are many, many people around the world with exactly the same problem. So I tried to contact this company and uh, all I got back from them was a phone number to ring for technical support worldwide. Rang it. All I get is someone talking Chinese, I can't understand them, they can't understand me. So I'm not going to totally give up on this uh, board, but I think it's going to be some time before I can uh, maybe get it running. I'll keep you posted. So, I mean, I, I need this running. So. I've got this little card. Now this is a Mac 3 control board or breakout board, whatever you'd like to call it. USB conductivity. And uh, I bought this to go in the CNC lathe that I built. And uh, I did show you partially how to wire it up, but not a full job. And there's a lot of people out there uh, asking me, oh, how do you wire up, you know, stepper motors and CNC rotors? So I'm going to show you using this. So first of all, I've laid this out methodically. So you have your interface board or your Mac 3 controller board, which uses a, a USB to your computer. Um, over here, this is a 24 volt, 240 or 230 volt, we're in Australia, AC converted to 24 volt DC. It doesn't have to be 24 DC, it can be all the way up to 60 volts, uh, depending on what driver and motor you are using. Your supplier of drivers and motors will tell you um, in their charts uh, what voltage your system can take. So you just purchase a uh, power supply which will supply the voltage for your system. This is a test device. Okay, so this is just on test. That's why I put it on 24 volt. Um, so this is the driver that speaks to or speaks back and takes, takes commands then from this board. Um, then this is then connected out to the motor. It's a, a four pole motor, st a standard uh, 24, NEMA 24 stepper motor. Uh, well, actually, this has got um, dual shaft output. Um, then this is a 24 DC volt supply 
to the board. Now this board is in two separate halves. This half here, this board, this part here, has a 5 volt output signal to the driver. Okay, this side here is a 24 volt side which supplies things like limit switches or homing switches and we'll be connecting one of those up too on test. So the arrangement is you have and I'll, zo I'll zoom in a little bit closer to this area here and show you how it's wired up. Okay so we have here we have a, a live that's a positive and negative or neutral and an earth coming in from the mains supply of your workshop and coming out we have a positive and a negative of DC 24 volt which comes in to the driver here so you have negative or ground connected here you have 24 volt or whatever voltage you want to supply into the uh, plus voltage DC in there so everything's labeled so you can't really go wrong now when you get your stepper motor you will probably be given a, a small booklet or card and it will tell you where to connect these colored wires onto your driver and in my case red goes to A plus blue goes to A minus black goes to B minus and green goes to B minus so then you come to the connections to the board or to the the breakout board now this connects into here so we'll plug it in so in this case this is I'm calling this the X axis so what you have is the orange lead is a 5 volt supply from the breakout board which comes into direction plus and it's looped over to pulse plus okay so you're just giving a 5 volt supply to these two and then the white lead is connected to the signal of pulse coming off the breakout board and the yellow lead is going to the direction terminal on the breakout board and we will connect those three up now so we have our live lead which is our orange lead and if you notice here on this second terminal here it's got 5 volt now that 5 volt is supplied via the computer and the USB cable so we'll just connect the live feed 5 volt up first that's that one okay so we ha then have X pulse and direction so just make sure these are slackened off and pulse in this pulse is here so it's the white lead and X direction is yellow lead okay so 
so they are connected up. So we're just going to worry about connecting up one axis and getting one axis working at this moment. And never have, when, when you're doing any wiring, never have the board connected to the computer. Always have it all disconnected. So the first thing we're going to do is plug the USB cable into our breakout board. Now this LED indicator here flashing is indicating that the board is working correctly. So now we will fire up Mark 3. Oh, I'm going to come up to Mark 3 loader and I have a special profile here that I've made for this card. I'm going to press OK. Mark 3 will open. OK, now press reset and I'll take you back down to the board and we'll see if we can get it to function electronically. Just watch the LED. I'm going to press um, the X um, direction is notice it's flashing so it's receiving a signal on the X output so now we're going to turn on the power supply to the motor okay we have a, a green LED light on inside the power supply we have a green LED light on the driver which indicates everything's okay and ready to go. Uh, we've got a green light on here which is means okay ready to go so we'll just see if the motor turns. And indeed it does. Left and right. Perfect. So it is a very simple process and a preferable process to bench test your equipment that you're building first. Now we've got one axis working, there's no real need to test the other axis outputs, you know, they invariably will work just fine. And you connect each one up identically to that. So now we are going to put the x-axis, actually it's not strictly true, um, the way that the homing switches or any axis switch works with this controller is in what they call parallel. So all of the switches are put in on one line. So we're going to do that right now. But first we need to switch them on. In actual fact, uh, in the profile I have already switched all these on and I'll just show you within the Mac 3 profile of what terminals I've turned on to recognize a, the homing switches. And they, they all, all the homing switches go in on the same line, like I say, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment or two. Okay, so we're going to go up here to Config, Ports and Pins, Inputs, and you see here that a uh, home switch for the X is enabled. It's on port 3 and pin number three uh, and indeed the Y is on port three pin number three and the Z is on port three pin number three. So all of the homing switches are connected in on the same pin or same line. So we will connect that up now I'll, I'll show you how to connect the power and the switch up. 
Okay, so this is the 24 volt side. Now, if you notice here, this is 24 volt. This is the positive input. The negative input to this board is DCM, which is DC common. Okay? And the other side of the switch is pin 3. So we're going to connect in on pin 3. And this is what it looks like in the wiring. Okay, so this is the positive going in here on the 24 volt into there. So this is the negative. Notice I've got the computer disconnected. Okay, so we have the negative now goes in on the DCM. And also one side of the wire. And also one side of the switch goes in with the negative. Just give the wires a slight pull, make sure that they're in there solid. And the red wire goes in on port or pin number three. Which is there. Oops. It's very cold in the workshop today. I got a job to hang on to these little tiny screwdrivers. Okay, so we've got a, a positive on 24 volt in. We've got a negative to DCM, which is DC voltage common, which is a negative. We've got one side of our switch on the negative and the other side of the switch on the pin number three. Okay, so we're, we're live. We're connected up to the computer. This is now live. So I'll take you back up to the Max 3 screen and we'll test it. Okay, so we've got the diagnostic screen and I'm just going to test the switch. So you can see the home in indicator LEDs are coming up, so Mac 3 sees it. So I hope I've given you a fairly easy explanation and made it fairly simple, because it is really simple, of how to connect up a power supply, driver, motor, and the interface card, or the Mac 3 card, and a limit switch, or home in switch, and how to get it working with Mac 3. Incidentally, the driver for this particular card and the the setup in Mac 3 uh, will be available as usual on my Patreon pages. So please press like and subscribe to the channel and if you would like to become a patron, patron information is below this video in the video description area and if you go along to my channel there's now 700 videos over two channels and uh, I'm sure there's something there to entertain you or interest you on CNC routers building them looking for them looking for a good quality one lasers um, fiber lasers and CO2 lasers 
uh, CNC mill, full conversion, and um, CNC lathe. So there's plenty there to uh, entertain you, I think. So thank you for joining me, and until the next video, it's bye for now. <laughs>